on Sunday and sell on Monday. That was always the mantra of car manufacturers when justifying their outings into motorsport. Yet few firms have taken this approach as seriously as Porsche. For more than half a century, the brand has been testing its models in the white heat of competition. And for the past decade or so, much of its focus has been on this car, the 911 GT3. The 911 is a true racer for the road, with many parts, including the engine, carried over from its Carrera Cup racer. And like all motorsport machines, this all-new version has benefited from a development program that's left no stone unturned in the pursuit of performance. For instance, there's a bigger, 4-litre, naturally aspirated engine, revised aerodynamics, and a thoroughly reworked suspension. Yet it's no heavier than its predecessor. That's quite an achievement. Finally, given that cars like this are designed to deliver the ultimate in driver engagement, Porsche has included an option of a six-speed manual gearbox for the first time ever on a 991 Series GT3. However, um, this car hasn't got one. Instead, we've got the seven-speed PDK that debuted in the 991 generation GT3 a few years ago. Now, that probably means it's better suited to the track we're on now, um, and it also means the 0-62 time drops from uh, 3.9 seconds to 3.4 seconds, which means you've got a whole five tenths of a second uh, to spend however you want um, when you get to 60 faster. There's still a lot to talk about with this new car, even if it doesn't have the six-speed manual gearbox. Most importantly is the new engine. Now, it's a four-litre flat six, up from 3.8 in the old car. Now that's the same size as we had in the GT3 RS, but Porsche haven't simply slotted that engine into the back of the new GT3. Oh no, they are much more thorough than that. They've almost totally redesigned it. There's a new crank, all sorts. The result is, yes, it produces the same 493 horsepower as the GT3 RS, and there's 460 newton meters of torque, but it now revs to, and I can barely believe this myself, an incredible 9,000 RPM, which is 200 odd RPM up on the GT3 RS. And as a result, this engine, which is essentially from the GT3 Cup car, a motorsport car, is sensational. So I'm in third gear now, 4,000 RPM, throttle down, and it just takes off and we're still 8,000, 9,000. <laughs> That's bonkers. The noise, it's just savage. The acceleration, it's, it's what you notice. And obviously when you double it up with the PDK transmission, you get these just rapid fire changes. Hit the paddle, bang, another gear change. Paddle, bang, another gear change. It's just so quick. And you can see why on a circuit, this combination of engine and gearbox is quicker, much quicker than the manual. And of course, to go fast on a circuit, you need a chassis that's up to the job as well. And again, no stone has been unturned. Little tweaks. Yes, it doesn't have the wide track of the GT3 RS, but development's entire technology, recalibration of the rear steering, so this car has four-wheel steering. Just means hard on the brakes, turn into the corner, it just bites, and then you've got all that weight over the rear axle from the engine, and the traction is phenomenal. I mean, this outside the GT3 RS, this is as close to a race car for the road as you are gonna get. And it just, if you excuse the pun, it laps up the hard work on this circuit. It's tireless. Yes, this car has got the six and a half thousand pound carbon ceramic brakes, which just haul the car down from big speeds relentlessly. And then you can turn the systems off. Not that you need to, the systems are so well calibrated that they never feel that intrusive. Turn in. You shouldn't be able to do that in a track bias 911. It just, it goads you into driving harder and faster. So, is the GT3 really this good? The short answer is yes. The longer answer is, oh my word, yes. Even away from the track, the 911 is sublime. It's noisy, of course, but far from deafening. And while the ride is firm, the damping is incredible, as it brilliantly rounds off the edges of even the nastiest bumps. 
This car is very nearly as easy to live with as a standard Carrera, and even though you'll rarely trouble its limits on the road, the Porsche communicates at any speed, making every journey a joy. Now, of course, most people who drive a GT3, yes, they're probably going to take it on track, but they can't take it on track every day of the week, and they're going to have to actually use this as a car on the road, and I'm not going to pretend it's refined or quiet. It's still a track bias Porsche 911. But if we stick the dampers into their softest setting, PDK into its normal mode, just let it shift up quietly. There's quite a lot of road noise, as you can tell, but it's not uncomfortable. Your, sh your fillings aren't knocked out of your teeth every time you go over a bump. You know, this it's got the latest Porsche infotainment system. There's even a reversing camera on this car. You could, you could use this every day if you wanted. Some super sports cars lose their appeal once you look past the jaw-dropping looks and explosive performance, but the GT3 is a car that you'll never stop learning and enjoying. Ok, so £112,000 is a large chunk of cash, but spend time with the GT3 and you'll wonder just how they've engineered such an incredible car for the money. In fact, when it comes to thrills generated per pound, you could almost call it a bargain. Click the video on the left to watch a track battle between the 911 GT3 and the Aston Martin V12 Vantage, or click the video on the right to watch a track battle between the 911 GT3 RS and the Cayman GT4. Click on the play icon to watch our latest video and click on our logo to subscribe.